do you want to join the exchange? Yes. Actually, we create such videos to transport you to a different place. Shall we chat? Yes. What's your name? Alexander Alexandrovich Abrazon, born on June 3, 1983. And where are you from? The city of Yasinovataya, Donetsk region. Yasinovataya, Donetsk region. Please tell us about your life. I was born and raised in the city of Yasinovataya. I am divorced. I have a secondary technical education. I was employed at Ukr Telecom. Very interesting. What did you do to get convicted? I am a serviceman of the Donetsk People's Republic. I was conscripted into service. Have you ever lived in a territory under occupation? Yes. I haven't traveled anywhere since 2014. Were you called up in 2019? Yes. They took me towards Avdivka on September 11th last year. Have you been in conflict since 2019? I was a communications officer. Just this? Yes. When the war began, I was already in position. Did you establish communication? Yes, I did this. So you're the person who is aware of all the negotiations and everything. Everything that transpired passed through you. Yes. Have the representatives of the SBU spoken with you? I was apprehended by the SBU. How were you caught? We were transitioning from one position to another. The bombardment began. That's how I was taken prisoner. What happened? I'm lost. By the way, do you willingly agree to the recording and publication of this video? Yeah, yeah. Now, I want everyone to understand how it happened that you got lost. Were you in some sort of location? Yes, it was a landing. How many of you were there? There were eight men there. My task was to ensure communication. They were lightly armed, correct? They had machine guns, meaning there were no tanks or anything else, right? No. And the intense bombardment began. Yes, there was intense gunfire. I was trapped right there. However, I ran into the SBU officers who were present. SBU military personnel. Yes, everything was peaceful, and naturally, I gave in. I'm sorry, but it seems to be using 268 part one. Tell me what it is. This refers to involvement in organizing terrorism. And Article 260, Part 2, pertains to illegal armed groups. Okay. Did you plead guilty? Yes, I admitted my guilt. So you don't have any questions? No, of course not. Of course not. What is the duration? 13 years. Do you think you have a chance for parole or pardon? I don't think about it. Did you fight for a cause in 2019, or because you had no other options? I was then called up. And what if you disagreed? I don't know, I have no idea. You went because you had no other choice right? Indeed, yes. I have been living there since 2014, and I knew that I would continue to live there. However, I wasn't certain that Ukraine would be able to bounce back. Were you detained with your phone? You were using your phone, weren't you? Yes. What was so interesting on your phone? I mean, photos and such nothing interesting. What has changed for you positively or negatively since the year 2014? The war started in 2014, 
which was the negative aspect. However, I didn't see anything positive. Why did the war start? I can't answer the question. Why did the war start? Because opinions on this matter may vary. We've always had different opinions. This is a child's answer, one might say. Uh, yeah. What I'm telling you isn't merely an opinion. The truth is, there was no time to comprehend and reflect on it. But the reality is, the war has begun. Do you believe that if the Russians hadn't provoked and assisted local collaborators and separatists, would anything have transpired? Without Russian interference, what if Russia hadn't helped? Yes. I don't think so. Helped is a somewhat weak word, I believe. I don't think so. Well, how else could it have worked? So if Russia hadn't intervened, there would have been no bombing in Donbass, correct? Certainly. Like this, for example, I carry on with life as usual. I see. Well, in that case, reach out to the Russian party, they are definitely monitoring these videos, trust me. I'm Alexander Alexandrovich Abrazon, born June 3, 1983, applying for an exchange. I hail from Yasinovataya, Donetsk region. 600th Territorial Battalion, Company Command. I'm a communications officer. If you watch these videos and, as you say, remember your people. Whether there will be any progress on this case, only time will tell. If you are not evacuated, then what? What value do their words about protecting the inhabitants of Donbass hold then? That's zero. I haven't received any assistance from them in a year, despite having already applied for an exchange. If they don't come for me and there's no action from their side, then that's... Well, that's just nothing. When I was recruited, they told me that they never leave their own behind and so forth. Well, I'm still alive. A letter is being written to the lawyer. Let's see how it unfolds. I'll tell you one thing that troubled me the most when I heard they were abusing, tormenting, and all sorts of things. Here I am, alive and unscathed. I didn't even ask you that. I want to say it myself. I stand for justice. To me, justice constitutes 80% of my life. When I was captured, I was not harmed. I have been treated fairly for the entire duration of my stay here. And the SBU. Nobody hit or tortured me. Although, I thought they would make me a suicide bomber. And some kind of gruesome death, huh? Indeed, it was a tragic death, but I speak this from the depths of my heart, as it is. From the 11th, when I was caught, until today, I've neither been beaten nor gone hungry. but they told it in a completely different way. Who told you that? Deputy commanders for political affairs. This was reported by those who claimed to have been held captive, alleging that they were subjected to beatings and other forms of mistreatment. But I'm speaking about myself now. I've experienced a lot and I've emerged completely unscathed. You're speaking about yourself and it's vital for us to shed light on this topic, now that we've raised it. Uh, sure. Who is disseminating this information and for what purpose? As I understand it, 
This is to spread misinformation, to foster resentment towards the enemy. A pointless and futile task, that's my view. All of this should lead you to the conclusion that you cannot give up. To prevent us from seeing the truth, how things really are, right? Suppose I encountered the truth. I observed it, I felt that truth. Now, that truth is part of my life. No Nazis? I haven't seen them yet. No one has seen them, regardless of whom I speak with. I haven't seen anyone being mutilated or beaten. I'm still in one piece. To put it in my own words, it's more about intimidating a person, instilling fear, and such things. Once again, this is to ensure that a person doesn't give up the moment they have the opportunity to do so. To destroy oneself or to drag someone else down with him. Give up and survive, we always yearn for life. Isn't this idea familiar to you? You can confidently write there that you wish to surrender. They'll guide you through the entire process. Preserve your life and refrain from harming others. To me, it seems like a wise decision. Alexander Petrovich Karlama? Yes. What is your date of birth? October 23rd, 1997. Where are you from? Volnavaka. You joined an unlawful militant group. You were at a checkpoint. Yes. Then you decided to put an end to the entire saga. And how did you end up in the hands of Ukrainian justice? I violated the law. I committed theft. That's why I ended up here. I was found guilty and am now serving my sentence here. Initially, you wanted to return there. Yeah, but then I changed my mind because I don't need it. Can I publish this great story? Please. How old were you then? 14 or 15. Did you face a hurdle? Yes. And now? 25. Yes, I didn't realize it at that time. It gradually dawned on me that this was wrong. Everyone can make a mistake. And where is your family? My family is there, but I couldn't do anything in that situation. That's understandable. But you see, even if your family is there, you still don't want to go back there. No. Because I know it won't end well. I assume you don't strongly support Russia's aggression. No. Watching the news? Yes. Do you see what they're doing? Ma'am. If you wish, you can add something of your own. I would like to wish the Ukrainians good luck. I implore the Russians to withdraw. Return to your own land, you have simply arrived in the wrong place. I forgot to ask you how you got there. You first approached that roadblock, then you bypassed it. Before the checkpoint, I was tried in Volnavaka for metal theft, under Article 185, Part 2. I was sentenced to three years. Were you condemned by the occupation authorities or by our Ukrainian authorities? Yes, I was convicted by a Ukrainian court. I was sent to a school for social rehabilitation. Yes, instead of serving your sentence, you were sent to school. Yes, it's fine. It so happened that the Cossacks came to us and inquired whether we would leave or not. The teachers and the principal were outraged. It led to a scandal, a total chaos. Cossacks? Understood, yes. It all started when 30 people, including myself, managed to escape. We ended up at a checkpoint. After passing the checkpoint, I abandoned everything and fled. Did you run away to Ukraine? Yes. I spent some time in Volnavaka, my hometown. Then we relocated to Mariupol. 
They approached me, started blaming me, claiming that they knew I was present there. I admitted, did not argue with them, and openly declared that I was guilty. I was found guilty in Valmavaca and given a two-year probationary sentence after collaborating with the police. My case was later moved to Mariupol. I was required to report for two years, but due to a violation of terms, it was reduced to a year. For about a year, and then he stopped. Then you were convicted of grand theft auto. Exactly. Can I inquire about something personal? After serving your term, you'll be freed. How much longer do you have to serve? Two and a half. For two and a half years. Are you going to abide by the law or not? I believe so. Since we've repeatedly made the same mistakes, we should, as the saying goes, live normally. Thank you. What is your name? Gleb Vladimirovich Monikov. What is your date of birth? May 16, 1993. Where are you from? Crimea, the city of Yalta. Crimea, the city of Yalta. Arrested in Lysychansk City, Luhansk region. City of Lysychansk. Do you want to go to the exchange? Yes. I see. So, tell me what you're in here for and what's the sentence? Punishment? Yes. 12 years. 12 years. For what? Article 111. Part 1. Traitor to the homeland. It's clear. What were you accused of? Charge by verdict? Yes. Based on the court's verdict and conclusion. I communicated with individuals who are representatives of the FSB, to whom I provided information. regarding the locations where military forces were stationed of the Ukrainian armed forces of the armed forces of Ukraine do you identify yourself as Ukrainian nationality or faith I am Georgian by nationality and your beliefs beliefs I am not unfamiliar with this country citizenship yes but my passport has expired. Okay. So, is this a fictional story then? Of course. You doubt my words. Hence I can't change your mind. Especially after your use of words like, allegedly, and, probably. Because that's what it says. There you have it. No, I'm the one saying, supposedly, likely. You have my phone number. If anyone is interested in the truth, I won't debate whether I'm right or wrong. I've served my time. Now we're moving towards what I need. Essentially, I'll still be free. I'm not interested in anything else. But just verify the geolocation of my phone from the 13th. You will be surprised to find that on the 14th, I was at the Lysyhansk City Police Department. I did not leave the city of Lysyhansk or the Department of Internal Affairs in this city. Therefore, all correspondence dated the 14th, 15th, and 16th was not conducted by me or on my behalf. They just led me to my 19th floor apartment, where they recorded my arrest as this legal process began. After being in custody for six days, I was only brought forward on the 19th day. There's a video that documents my arrest. Despite what it may seem, I was not handcuffed. I simply had my hands behind my back while they aimed automatic rifles at me. I understand you and what you are talking about. Anyway, it was just as I'm telling you. It's all done for a purpose. But here, from the 15th to the 16th. From the 15th to the 16th, they allegedly started tracking me. Thus, I was supposed to relay the most recent data. It's about how I pointed out the location between the clinic and the market that was targeted. But the shell didn't reach it. Then I was supposed to traverse the city, 
collect information and relay it to Andre. But I didn't have the opportunity to pass it on because I was apprehended. Yeah, that's right. The SBU and everyone else. I mean, that was the version. Did you say you were detained on the 19th? Let me rephrase it. That is, there's a man who is currently in prison. There are many others in the Dnepropetrovsk prison who shared a cell with me. People, like me, who know that I was incarcerated on the 13th. Okay. There are individuals who are aware of this entire situation. There are individuals who can corroborate all of this. You arrived here before you started running your business. I was stopped at a checkpoint near Arteo Mosque. Okay. I was detained in Lysyhansk. On my way to Artemisk from Lysyhansk, I was held up at a checkpoint at the intersection leading into Artemisk. A family with a small child was in one car, and I was traveling with a companion in the second car. I was arrested precisely in the direction of Artemisk. I was transported to Arteo Mosque, where I spent the night in a basement. In the morning, Officers from the SBU collected me and took me to Lysyhansk, after which I did not leave the place, meaning, I was arrested on the 13th. Everything else was created right before my eyes. It was just explained to me there that it would be better to go along with it now. But you signed the agreement. Of course, but the reality is that I got what I got. Yes, they sentenced me to 12 years and they explained why this deal was necessary. Either way, I will eventually be free, but you have the chance to free the soldiers who are currently held captive at my expense. In other words, they made it clear to me from the start that I was being used as a bargaining chip. I see. It's unclear when that will happen. Why exactly were you detained? Then practically no one was left in Lysychansk. Was there any particular reason? correspondence, or comments on social media. There were comments on social media, remarks about my grandmother. This is not a fabrication. This is how it transpired. She passed away. Indeed, I have voiced many opinions about our, as they say, beloved country. And therefore, you logged into TikTok and made several statements. What exactly did you say? I spoke about the necessity of battling in the fields. We have already discussed this topic. I'm just saying that I didn't follow the verdict at the time. I thought the verdict encapsulated the entire situation. No. This verdict is just a single case and a single incident. There's nothing more to it. Yes. And I understood that you expressed your thoughts on TikTok, discussing various topics. I can even summarize for you what you said. In essence, if we had taken the route that you and I are currently following, they would never have been able to accuse me under Article 111. No, why not? In that moment in April. They might have deduced and stated that you voiced your opposition to Ukraine on social media. This opposition was triggered when an AFU tank was positioned near your grandmother's home, followed by a bomb attack that led to her demise. Understandably, this incident caused you distress. I was angry. Yes, and you began to voice your opinions on social media, stating as you did in our last conversation, that if one wants to fight, they should do it in an open field. I specifically addressed the fact that civilians are the victims in any war. Yes, I understand that there must be casualties, but when, generally speaking, only civilians are dying. It's not just civilians who are dying. Everyone dies, everyone dies. But remember the last time when you and I were focused on the fact that we were battling our adversaries using such strategies essentially taking cover behind civilians. No, there are simply no alternatives. If they have been bombarding our positions from residential areas, from civilian houses, using them as shields since 2014, we are left with no other choices. We cannot just stand in an open field and say, 
Go ahead and fire. I simply believe that a person who refuses to degrade themselves or stoop to the level of an opponent they despise and disrespect should behave more nobly. You still wouldn't provide another option. I'm not a military strategist, so I can't offer any suggestions here. Me too. That's why I think so. And this is just my opinion. Nothing more. Haven't you lived in Russia for a long time? From the age of 14. Did you go to Russia? No, I've been living in Crimea since 2010 and have never left. But Crimea is? In Crimea. However, Crimea has since come under Russian jurisdiction. So, what I mean is, Crimea is ours, it's Ukrainian, but it's under Russian occupation. Did you live there? I only went to Kyiv in 2008 because my brother had a law firm there. However, his business failed and he also relocated to Crimea. I then returned to Crimea and have continued to live there ever since. Overall, it's quite a sad tale, isn't it? So, did you move to Russia after that? I resided in Crimea, that remained constant. However, I traveled to various cities for work. I stayed in rented apartments in those places. Whenever I needed a break or a place to stay, I would, of course, return to Crimea, and in this way, I traversed across Russia. The only exception was Sakhalin, which is on the border with Japan. Can this be considered a tour? Yes, it was a challenge. In essence, I was confronting the state itself, specifically the FSB department that handles such matters. Okay, two minutes. Introduce yourself. Gleb Vladimirovich Manikov. Date of birth? May 16, 1993. Where are you from? I was born and raised in Yalta, Crimea, and most recently, I lived and worked in Lysyhansk, Luhansk Oblast. In this verdict, your phone number is documented, your email is documented, and it is recorded that you coordinated the arrival of artillery, as well as disclosed the positions of the Ukrainian troops. There's a verdict. The judgment is final, encompassing all the necessary details. I'm just not confirming or denying anything. I don't wish to ask anything. I don't need anything. Reach out to Russia so they can retrieve you if you desire an exchange. I don't want to go to jail. How many years? Twelve years for treason against the homeland. Do you want to leave this place? I, of course, want to because for me it's primarily about freedom. Okay, if they're interested in that option, I hope they'll choose you.